Hey y'all, it is Tasha. We are back with another Married at First Sight review, y'all. We are getting down to the wire finally with these couples, okay? Oh my God, y'all know the drill before I jump in and get started. Don't forget to like, comment, and hit that subscribe button. If you are not already a part of the family, come on over here if you're watching the videos. Why you not subscribe? Subscribe to the channel, y'all. Come on, let's get into it. So we are season 13, episode 16. We are so close to this day, I can smell it, but I know they're already gonna drag it out next week. So let's go on and get into this episode this week, okay, y'all? So we start off on day 50 of marriage. We see Mirla is baking some cookies for Gil, which we know is his love language. Rachel asks and Jose if he would take a bullet for her, and he says yes, and she says, oh, I would do the same. And I'm like, not me, child, and I don't know why you would take a bullet from him either. <laughs> Where they do that at? It is six days until decision day. We see Ryan is out playing tennis with one of his friends and he thinks, you know, it's safe to say him and Brett are not on the best, best terms. And I'm like, you think? <laughs> Saying how things ended last week. He says that this is tough because it's something he wanted for so long. And I'm like, how you want it for so long, but yet you didn't even try, Ryan. Like you were turned off the minute you saw that red hair turn the corner. So I'm just not understanding how you wanted this for so bad and you waited for so long, but yet you put no effort into it. Make it make sense. He says that he and Britt have had fun. And I said, where <laughs> and when? Okay. In his past relationship, he says there were issues he could pinpoint as to why the relationships didn't work. And his, his friend said, well, why'd you do those things? And I'm like, I see the shade, but you know your friend and you know he's probably the one causing all these issues. He says that his friend says that Ryan is not a great communicator and he needs someone to call him out. And I'm like, and Britt did. And when she did, he ran away because he could not handle the heat that she was throwing at him. He says that he hates being the reason that this is not working. And I'm like, Ryan, <laughs> Ryan, if at this point you don't start, stop feeding us this BS because you don't hate that you're the reason this isn't working because you did not try to improve or make this situation better. So you don't care. So stop telling us these things when your actions show the complete opposite of the words that are coming out of your mouth. And at this point, we don't believe the words that are coming out of your mouth, sir. Point blank in the period. <laughs> He tells his friend that things were good and then, you know, I downloaded the dating app. He said, you know, it's a huge letdown and he really wanted this more than anything. Um, his friend asks if, you know, if you could make this work and he says, it's hard to say. And I'm like, Ryan, stop it for the hundredth time. Stop it. Y'all are done and over. If y'all say yes on decision day, y'all are some fools. Okay. <laughs> he basically... Um, once the end goal of having a wife and having kids and the whole family, but he's not really willing to do the work. He says that he's trying to decide if he should just push through with Brent or start over and basically sounding like the starting over is a daunting task. Yes, it is, especially because, you know, you want it to end a marriage and family and, you know, kids and everything, which can take a little bit of time to like build that type of relationship. But sir, that don't mean you just suck it up and deal with the person that you're already married to when you don't like her. You we've seen it. You've said it. Let's just move on here. OK, next we see Michaela get a visit from her sister. She's at her own apartment. And I just had to say in my notes, I was like, Michaela, honey, you are wearing that maxi dress, girl. I am here for it. OK, she tells her, you know, that Zach left again during the last conversation that they had with Dr. Pepper, which they flash back and tell us that was four days ago. She tells us about the meeting, you know, about how Dr. Pepper shared that, you know, you guys should agree to have one last conversation um, before decision day. And Michaela tells us that after that second meeting, when Dr. Pepper said that they decided that they will go out to eat, you know, when they got in the elevator together, looking all sneaky, like they was going to be up to something. Yeah. She said she mentioned she was hungry and then they went out to get something to eat. She says while they were eating, he asked her if she wants to spend the night. And my face just went like WTF. What? What is going on here, Zach? You say you don't want to be here. You fear for your life. You are afraid of what she may do. You just can't take it anymore. You are just not the person you used to be. You don't like the person that you are, but you ask her to spend the night. Get out of my face with this. <laughs> so her sister's like, so just spend the night, just spend the night. And Michaela's like, well, 
I packed a bag and her sister's like, Ann, and she spent the night. And I'm like, child, get these two out of my face. Cause I, I don't care what happens to Zach and Michaela. I don't care. Like I said last week, if he leaves, if he cries, she leaves, she cries. I don't care anymore. The toxicity of it all, I can't take it anymore. Her sister asked how it felt to be back with Zach with no Dr. Pepper, no production. And she said it felt normal. So her sister asked, so where does things stand? And she says, well, I don't know. And I'm like, girl, we don't know either. She says she has something to do, some thinking to do. And her sister asks, um, her sister then says she isn't sure if Zach is leading Michaela on. She isn't sure if Zach is leading himself on. She ain't even sure if Zach knows what he wants. And I believe all of the above that her sister said as well. And I do believe everything that she said applies to her sister as well. Because they both some confusing people about where to go in this relationship right now. We then see Bao. She is out eating with one of her friends, not Sarah, the shady friend. Um, she tells her that, you know, their relationship has just been up and down and up and down and up and down. Yes, it has. She tells her that Johnny has been taken to task by his friends, family and the experts. But really, the only person that validated his feelings was Sarah. And we know this is true because Sarah validated the feelings that he already felt. So, of course, She's going to be the main source of, see, somebody agrees with me. I wasn't all crazy. This makes total sense. Of course, that's going to be the person that holds most of the weight when it comes to this situation. Um, Johnny just doesn't want to change at this point. Her friend says, you know, she feels so bad um, for her because she wanted this so bad. And really, the mountains of cons are kind of outweighing the pros. She still feels that they had good times, which they have. But I feel like as they flash back on their good times, they have had them, but they'll have like one hour of good times. And then the other 23 hours are deep conversations and arguments and trash. So, yeah, I, I don't discount the great times y'all have had, but they've been small amounts of good times that then flip and always lead into hours of these deep, dark discussions that send y'all into a terrible place and have Johnny saying evil, vile things out of his mouth. She says that there is space in her heart for forgiveness if he apologizes and changes. And I'm like, this feels like deja vu with Chris and Paige, how Paige just wanted to give Chris chance at the chance at the chance once he would say these nothings in her he ear. And I'm just feeling like this is the same thing going on with Bao. Like anything that Johnny tells her to give her any little bit of hope, she's like, oh, yay, we can work on it. I can stay married. Rachel then goes out to drinks with goes out for drinks with one of her friends and she immediately starts with the lies about how great Jose is. Y'all know how Jose and Rachel do every single episode. Every time they talk to each other or talk to the experts, everything is great with between them. Her friend asks if she is staying married and she says she has some things to think about because they have a lot of things in common. But there's also some cons um, that she has to see if she can put up with forever, i.e. being locked out of your apartment. <laughs> Her friend is really giving her some really good advice um, about Jose and dealing with his anger. Rachel then tells her, you know, about these cards. And the friend is like, what, what was on these cards? Like her friend is reading through the BS and I am all here for the friend. OK, <laughs> um, Rachel says she sometimes thinks she's been a little naive thinking it won't happen again. And I'm like, you are being naive because it's only a matter of time that it will happen again maybe he won't lock you completely out because hopefully at wherever y'all stand at that point you will have your own key to enter and exit as you please but it will happen again when his anger pops up and he cusses you out and he does something vile and evil that just wasn't a one occurrence Jose has done that before and he will do it again so I suggest you really listen to your friend and the friend again was not here for Jose and I wanted to give the friend a high five from the TV because she was just rolling her eyes and just being real slick with her comments and I was like I am here for it because Rachel needs somebody to really snap her out of this twilight that Jose has her in and really bring her back down to reality honey Mirla then meets up with one of her friends and gets gives an update on how life has been going her friend asks about the red flags and Mirla says you know he's he's had great patience I, I really don't see any major red flags because I'm a handful and he's been very patient with me she said that the only con has been finances um, and that he really isn't established in his career because they do share that he kind of just became a firefighter recently I don't remember that in the very beginning that this was kind of a new career for him 
And basically she says they are, that they are at completely different places in their life financially. And I think, again, we've known that since they won. So now with only a few days away from decision day, why are we still talking about this? Like either y'all have resolved it and come to some sort of compromise about how you will move forward in this relationship regarding finances or it's a deal breaker that's something that you guys cannot compromise on but at this point i am sick of hearing about the finances because that's really the only thing and that's been there since day one um, of us finding out you were a little bit you know bougie and high maintenance he was a little bit more frugal with his stuff which both are fine as long as you're okay with the lifestyle but again y'all have to compromise on what that looks like instead of just talking about it and complaining about it, but not really having any real resolve about what this looks like realistically going forward for us. We see Jose meets with one of his, his friends and he says that there are some things he still does not have the answers to, that they are a good team, but you know, they still have a little bit of, you know, disagreements. And I'm like, so you just gonna downplay everything to your little friend and not tell your friend how you cussed her out and locked her out of the apartment and threatened to throw your ring at her. We just gonna leave. You just continue to leave those details out. Every time you tell this story about Rachel leaving and you being worried about that, you leave out just that little bit of information about you going absolutely crazy. Okay, Jose. <laughs> he still questions her being faithful in her communication. And I'm just like, Jose, you trash little man. Like, I have no words for you at this point because you continue to try to paint this narrative as if... Rachel is just some cheater. You're the best communicator and her communication is trash. And like, you're the perfect gentleman and I don't know what's wrong with her. And I hate you for it. He tells his friend that she um, stayed at the ex's house that night. And again, I feel like he is trying to have Rachel be viewed some type of way in the eyes of his friend without truly sharing what he did to cause that reaction and to cause her to then have to find somewhere to sleep because you locked her out. <laughs> Johnny meets up for beer with beer for a couple of his friends. He wants um, to hear, you know, if his friends have anything to offer to improve the marriage. And I'm like, Johnny, this is a lie because again, experts, family, everybody has given you things and tips that you should probably do and you have yet to do them. So I'm not sure why coming from your friends, it's now gonna all of a sudden put a light bulb off in your head for you to at least just be a decent human being to bow and to make this marriage work. But whatever we hear. His friend asks, you know, when things started going south and he says he thinks it was the honeymoon. And I was like, now, Johnny, you gonna say it was the honeymoon when you was buying her shirts, you know, organizing nice picnic dinners for her. I'm telling her you really care for her a lot. Telling her she got a big old booty. Lord, have mercy. I'm like, Johnny, cut it out. You was all smitten over bow at the honeymoon. Maybe it was when she mentioned she don't shower every day or she want to work out and then get in the bed that turned things south for you. But you can stop with the lie that at the honeymoon things were south because you were all about bow during that honeymoon. Cut it out, sir. But he says that, you know, her taking him to her childhood home made him want to take care of her. And they had deeper conversations after that time. And he said he felt something, but he doesn't know what he felt. OK, his friends say, you know, he looks sad. He looks distraught, which is basically the same thing that Bao's friend kind of said to her as well. And I'm like, if both of y'all just making each other look real sad and distraught, maybe you should just not be together so the other person can be happy again. Just the thought. <laughs> his friends just say that they aren't trying to convince him to change his mind, but wants him to think about everything before making a decision. Um, they truly make valid points and tell him, you know, not to make a rash decision based on how things have been for the past seven weeks. Um, and again, I think this would be very helpful if this was given to someone that has not been a complete ass for the past seven weeks to his wife. Maybe it would hit different. But for now, I'm like whatever it's a little bit too little too late in this situation we see zach meet up with gil and they talk about you know their situation of how they left off the couple's retreat and zach said you know he had had enough at that point gil asks if he if she had apologized and he says well not really but she owned up to the blow up and said you know it was mostly her and really had nothing to do with him he says that her actions have shown that she is in it for the right reasons that she is a great woman. And again, I continue to eye roll every time Zach, because 
when she has, you know, such explosive moments, he leaves and he says how he just does not like this. He doesn't like when she does it. He doesn't like the person that he is. He doesn't really know how to deal with it. So it just blows me every time he's like, she's such a great woman. I'm like, Zach, which which is it? It sounds like these blow ups that she's having, which he's really only seen what twice when she really well I guess one time the the whole retreat thing was kind of him seeing it but sometimes the other situations that we've seen thus far was her reacting with us watching her but that not necessarily him being in the space so I just I don't get it it's totally confusing what he says all the time to her <laughs> well about her he tells Gil about their meeting with Dr. Pepper and says that Michaela, you know, realize her reactions are a serious issue and it's something that she needs to work on. Great. But when is she going to work on it? He says he doesn't think the past eight weeks have worked out, but who knows what the future holds. So again, still trying to leave the door open that I'm going to say no on decision day, but can we still have sex after we leave there? Because we still trying to figure out what we're doing. That's basically what he's saying. We then see Britt packing up her things at the apartment. She says that, you know, she has not spoken to Ryan since she left. Um, she ends up getting a phone call from her sister and she's actually giving her an update on how things are going. And she says that she almost didn't seem surprised that when she called Brent, I mean, called Ryan out about the app. Like, it's like he wasn't surprised or he maybe he didn't even care that she knew that he had downloaded the app. And I agree because he really didn't give her anything besides I think I'm a head out <laughs> at this point. Um, Britt says she is trying her hardest every single day. And I really, truly think she is because, again, Ryan is not her type and what she expected either. But she was able to get over that when Ryan was really stuck in that. But it's hard for you to really try and give your all when the other person isn't really giving you anything to work with at all. So Britt says she's a little angry, but mostly disappointed because things didn't have to happen this way. And I completely agree. We are now four days until decision day. Rachel and Jose go out on a date and he says he feels very confident in where his head is at. He said he has identified the things he needs to work on and he blames social media for people wanting to go out and travel, you know, yellow in. And I'm like, Jose, if you don't shut your pink lips up, we gonna sit here and blame social media that people want to go out and travel in YOLO really though Rachel's like well I kind of think the opposite I just really want to travel um she has now kind of compromised and said I just really want one big trip every other year when I feel like before she said she wanted one trip a year Jose then has to bring in and talk about you know not having a lot of money growing up um he doesn't think it matters you know the type of trip we can go up to you know, we can go to Dallas. We can go to, you know, Fort Worth. We can just road trip all in Texas and it is, it's fine. It's fine. And I'm like, Jose, cut it out. You're not a child anymore. You have the means and the finances to travel. I'm going to need you to get up off that wallet, swipe the card and book a trip. I don't think she is being unreasonable at all to say she wants one big, potentially international trip every other year. You telling me you can't put on your whiteboard and carve out some savings for a trip every other year, Jose? Get out of my face with this. <laughs> but they just are on completely opposite ends of the spectrum. And it seems like a big deal to Rachel that she truly, truly enjoys traveling. And these road trips that Jose talking about just ain't going to cut it. So I'm like, girl, divorce this man and let his little self travel around the state of Texas all by himself as much as he wants. And you go ahead and catch flights and not feelings. Okay. We see Mirla and Gil go roller skating, which is super cute. I love to roller skate. Um, they sit down and talk about decision day. And Gil says that the finance stuff and her negativity is a big deal for him. And he feels like she sometimes shit on other people that is not where she is. <sighs> I hear him. And I said, now, Gil, I feel like these were very valid concerns in the beginning. But now that it has been several weeks and we really have not seen Mirla be this negative Nancy over the past few weeks, you really need to let that go. And the finances issue, I feel, is a personal issue for Gil. It's not an issue for Mirla that she makes more money than he does and she's able to afford the life that she has and that she wants. But Gil just can't shake that she is the breadwinner and she is making most of the money here. That is your problem, Gil. 
that's not a meal of problem. Suck it up or move on if you can't deal with it. Um, he says that he doesn't want her to be a spoiled brat. And I'm like, now, Gil, spoiled brat. Like I can deal without being the brat, but I want to be spoiled. OK, whether I'm spoiling myself or my man is spoiling me. I deserve to be spoiled. You need to get with it, Gil. <laughs> he continues to say money does not motivate him. And I actually don't think money necessarily motivates Mirla as well. I just think she sees that, you know, I know where I, how I grew up and where I used to be. And now I'm not there anymore. So she really celebrates and she is proud of herself for being able to achieve what she has and move out of that state of mind. Doesn't think that I don't think it means that she's like, oh, I'm too good for anybody else. Or, you know, I forgot where I came from and I've had humble beginnings. No, but I'm not going to stay there. I'm going to celebrate where I am and enjoy the fruits of my labor. Like, I don't blame the girl. But at this point, Gil is really getting on my, er, on my nerves because I believe if the roles were reversed and if he was the one making most of the money and being bougie, like this would not be a whole issue because he would be the man and he would be able to afford everything just fine without feeling like he is quote unquote living off of his wife because she makes most of the money. So get over it, Gil. I'm tired of hearing about it. We are now three days until decision day. We see all the couples meet up to hang out and talk for the last time until decision day. Of course, expert Gil wants to start picking pe people's brain and get the party started. <laughs> Jose starts and, and says, you know, because Gil starts asking about, you know, what would make them um, say yes or no on decision day. Jose starts and says that Rachel asked, you know, what would make him say no on decision day? He says effort and communication. Gil says, you know, his reason to say no would be if Marilyn continues to live like she is single um, as if there's in there are certain things that she would not change, which I'm like, really, the only thing she said was non-negotiable was the shopping. And again, if she can afford it and she's not asking you for it, Gil, give it a rest at this point. Britt says um, to say yes on decision day, there would have to be chemistry and mutual respect. And to say no, basically, those things just wouldn't have to exist. Ryan says he's been very honest about himself about this whole thing and he's just gonna go with that and I'm like okay Ryan Johnny says he will say yes if he saw some potential um, and he would give it a shot to keep hanging out Bao says it takes two people to start and sustain the marriage but only one person to end it she was hoping to find her forever during this process um, and this process was a lot for her because she's not a type of person that take risks. So to take this huge risk and for it to kind of not pan out how she wanted to was really big of her. She says that Johnny has pushed her to be a better person um, and she asks if she if she knows what she's going to do. And she says she has no clue. And I'm like, bow, still everything that you've been through, you still have no clue what you want to do on decision day. I'll help you out, girl. Say no. It's that simple. <laughs> Zach says a yes on decision day would mean this works for him in the last eight weeks have been happy. And I'm like, well, that would be a no, because we know the last eight weeks have not been happy for you, sir. <laughs> um, Bao says then, you know, would be a no. And she starts talking in confessional about, you know, I know Zach is a very intelligent person, but you know, I don't think I could emotionally come back from a no. That's like you telling the world, no, I don't want to be married to you. And then whispering, hey, Michaela, can we still get it in and date even though I want to be married to you and I'm divorced to the world? Would that work for you? That's essentially what is going on. <laughs> and Bao is like, no, if it is the, the potential to be like, maybe we can still work on this or try, then that would be a yes on decision day, not a no. And I 100% agree because that whole let's get divorced and then continue to date don't make no sense because you can just stay married and then still just get divorced at another time if y'all figure out things don't work out after the camera has left. But whatever. Um, we then see that Bao says she does not care about the legality of marriage and on decision day. But the answer is just a yes or a no for her. And it's point blank. If it is yes, we together. If it is no, don't call my phone. Ask it for no dates no more, basically. <laughs> Johnny and Zach in this situation basically just wants their cake and eat it too. They want to be released from the confines of being married and, and actually having a wife and responsibilities. But then they actually still, you know, want to be with their wives otherwise, but still be free to date other people just in case somebody better than you come along. I'm not married no more, so I can go ahead and leave you that much easier. Whatever. 
Gil then asked the group if they found out anything about themselves. And I'm like, didn't we already answer this question before? I feel like Gil has already posed this question to the group. And here we are yet again, circling back around to this nonsense. Brent says that she set out to have an open mind. And when she was faced with it, she did. And she didn't think she would be able to. So she learned that about herself. Rachel said in the past, an argument would mean breakup. And obviously she stuck around from Jose putting her out. Bao says she had a lot more patience and she really tried hard on being more kind than she was in previous relationships. So again, maybe a little bit of truth to what that friend Sarah was saying. Still don't discount that she was shady, but I don't think everything that she said was a lie. Johnny says he has learned that he thought he was an even kill and very calm person. And this process showed that he is an emotional wreck. And I'm like, no truer words have been spoken. OK, Zach said he would agree with Johnny because he's cried more in this process than in his 27 years of life. And he thought his reasoning skills were good, but he realized they still need a little bit more work as well. Gil says that he's been able to be vulnerable for someone for the very first time. Um, and Johnny says that really it boils down to you kind of have to just go into every relationship thinking you might get hurt. And I'm like, you're right. We're all human. Things change from day to day. And although it's hard to think about that, you can only really control yourself. So you really kind of have to prepare yourself that if things go south, how am I going to pull myself back together? We are now two days until decision day. Gil talks to his mom on the phone to get some advice. He tells her, you know, there are some things that he likes and some things he isn't sure about. Of course, calling her prissy and everything like that. He tells his mom that Mirla is high class and he just doesn't want it to change him. And I'm like, Gil, you are a grown man. Are you afraid that you're going to fall in love with Gucci and Prada because Mirla's going to buy it for you and then she leaves and you can't afford it for yourself? Like, how is her liking nice things and how does that change you? If you don't want to buy it, still go ahead and go to Target and buy your shirts if you have been. It ain't like Mirla has tried to force her designer labels on you or tell you that you need to then switch up your wardrobe and how you dress, you dress just fine. And again, she has not said anything or bought you anything to make us feel like she's going to try to change who you are as a person. So cut it out and stop telling your mama this nonsense. <laughs> Gil says that she makes almost twice as much as him. And he thinks that he, if he thinks about how he grew up with his family, he grew up with his dad paying the bills. And he says, while he can't afford to pay all the bills, that really would leave nothing left um, for him. And he says he doesn't think that it's fair. Yet again, I have not seen where Mirla has asked him to pay all the bills or that she would not contribute. Like she is, y'all have shared your finances and she's completely aware of where you guys fall. And she has not said that that's a deal breaker or she would completely leave. So I feel like Gil is trying to make decisions or complaining about things that really have not been shown is an issue for both of them. It's an issue for him. And I believe because that's the issue for his masculinity and how he feels he should be the provider. And because she makes almost twice as much as him, he knows that the roles in that aspect will kind of be reversed. And I think it's just a, a hit and a bruise to his ego. He says that, you know, she's a complainer, um, but yet the communication has been good between them. And I'm said at this point, Gil, stop sh saying she's a complainer. I don't think she's complained about much so far. And she has really been able to take what he says and really make quick changes, in my opinion, of how she speaks and the things that she says. Um, but I think he just wants her to change completely and not complain about anything. And I think that's just completely unrealistic. Um, but he just continues to talk about her changing. But I notice he never talks about him changing himself to accommodate her. Like if she does end up complaining or what you consider to be complaining, what are you going to do to to combat that? If she continues to want to buy her designer things, which she has already said, then what are you going to do to make the adjustment? I am so sick of these men this season really wanting the women to do all the bending, the breaking, the accommodating for them. What are y'all bringing to the table that these women want to stay with you, sir? Like, it's not all about you. I'm so tired of it. We see Bao and Johnny meet up for a date and Bao looks amazing in her sequins and shiny dress and shoes. And I was just like, yes, let him get one last look before decision day and you tell him no. Come on, Bao. Don't disappoint us, girl. Johnny continues to say he doesn't know what he's going to say on decision day. And they talk about the ups and downs that they've had over the past several weeks. 
Johnny says his friends have encouraged him to still explore the relationship and he is open to it. Bao says she could see a world where she could be happy with him. Um, he thanks her for sharing her past with him because it showed a lot of who she is and where she came from. But yet the conversation from Sarah is, of course, still on his mind because he just can't get over that. Bao says what they have gone through is a drop in the ocean for what she has seen. Um, and I'm assuming what she's seen her parents go through. And I'm like, Bao, I know that's cool. And it's supposed to be for better or worse and everything. But also everybody don't want to struggle love. So just because you've gone through the struggle and you've seen your parents com come through the other side, Johnny has seen his parents struggle and seen his mama say, uh -uh, I ain't putting up with that no more and I'm moving on. So you just can't expect him to just roll with it because that's what you saw in your household. He saw the opposite and things turned out fairly well for his family. So I see both sides of the coin. We see all the couples getting ready for bed as this is their last night together before decision day. And Jose says he doesn't really know what lies ahead. And Rachel says she thinks the time alone will allow them to really think about things to make a sound decision on decision day. Child, we both know y'all gonna say yes or whatever, but y'all ain't gonna work out long term. So say yes on decision day. Let's move on and we'll see y'all get divorced later on next year. Mirla and Gil, I'm um, talking. He says it's bittersweet sleeping together for the last time and he isn't 100% sure what he will do. He says it has been easy to be vulnerable with her and they have, no, have had no ugly times and Mirla agrees with him. Mirla tells him that she has no regrets going into decision day and he says whatever decision she makes, he will respect it. Mirla says she doesn't know if she will say yes on decision day because their life goals are really in opposite directions because we know she's really highly driven by you know her career and things like that gil just really wants to as long as they're doing okay and where i'm at is fine he really said he really sees oh so far what we've seen really no drive to achieve more um and again i still think it boils down to finances for them because i feel like life goals they both want the same thing as far as marriage having a partnership having a family and kids and all that it is truly just the finances that seem to be on opposite ends which again they can work out if they just resolve it and stop talking about it <laughs> johnny and bow have drinks if they as they wrap up the night and really talk about their journey so far together and then there's this awkward silence and they're like well maybe we should go to bed and they go in different rooms and i'm sure they'll overthink this for the next 24 hours <laughs> The episode wraps up with the couples preparing to leave their apartment. We see Brett and Ryan, oddly enough, meet up at their apartment and he acts like he's there to get the things that he left there. And Brent's like, looks like he got pretty much everything he needs, but whatever. But he says he does say he has already gotten most of his stuff, but he basically came there because he feel he needs to apologize to Brent because of the whole dating app thing. He really beats around the bush and then asks her how things have been going. Brent says, you know, there's some small talk and all this BS. Ryan says he feels stupid about it and starts to kind of chuckle and really tries to downplay the whole situation. And I'm like, Ryan, stop it. Cause right now you're really trying to downplay her feelings and emotions and how this made her not only look to the world as we're watching this on TV, but how this made her feel internally. He says, you know, regardless, he never really meant to hurt her. And again, I'm like, bye, Ryan, because what did you expect this to do? Make her happy that you downloaded a dating app and you treated her like trash these past seven weeks? OK, he says, regardless of how things work out in the end, it doesn't change how he feels about her. And I'm like, well, there is some truth because we know you really had no feelings for her. So those feelings won't, in fact, change. <laughs> we see the couples individually give us their own footage of how they are going into decision day the next day and basically everybody acts like they have no clue what they're going to do leading up into decision day. I roll whatever. <laughs> but y'all, we will meet back up here next week for decision day. I really hope they can get all the decisions out in one episode, but y'all know how Married at First Sight does. We're probably going to drag this out into two episodes, but did y'all see the clips that it looks like Gil said that he and Mirla consummated the marriage and Mirla rolls her eyes a little bit because she like, why you got to tell everybody? But I told y'all last week, I said, Mirla starting to be all over Gil. They look like they smashing. They just didn't want to tell us. And it looks like I was right that they was getting it in. They just didn't share with us that they was getting it in, which is okay. Y'all married. Do your thing. 
But leave your final predictions below on the couples of who y'all think are going to say yes and who y'all think are going to say no. I personally think everybody is going to say no except for Gil and Mirla. And I think Jose and Rachel, again, are going to say yes, but they won't make it long term. But I think everybody else is going to say no. And if they don't say no, they should say no. <laughs> but leave your thoughts and comments below. Y'all know we will get it popping and chat it up then. Until next time, I'll see y'all next week. Peace.